and those victories cannot be accomplished by shooting a fly with a bazooka. And we are back to my previous setup. I got my laptop fixed. It took like one month or so because um, I don't trust that guy. But anyway, today we're here to talk about self-compassion because we people are keen to beating ourselves and being our own worst enemies especially when things don't go as we planned we tend to exaggerate the real picture and make it worse putting ourselves in more dire situation that we were in to begin with so i have a video from the school of life and i would like to comment it without further ado let's dive into it to survive in this high pressured crazy world most of us have to become highly adept at self-criticism we learn how to tell ourselves off for our failures and for not working hard or smart enough. But so good are we at this that we're sometimes in danger of falling prey to an excessive version of self-criticism, what we might call self-flagellation, a rather dangerous state which just ushers in depression and underperformance. We might simply lose the will to get out of bed. I would like to say that this kind of a self-flagellation that he talks about is pretty normal amongst people. We tend to be our own worst enemies. That originates from a good place initially because we have this innate feeling of pushing ourselves towards progress, towards development. And if we lacked that kind of a feeling of self-flagellation, we wouldn't be able to... With great power comes great responsibility be accountable to things that we want to progress in. Where it gets wrong is that we take it tad bit too far, losing control of moderation and understanding of reality, what is possible, what is realistic, and forgetting totally about the notion of patience, making us to indulge in self-hatred and other similar destructive behaviors. For those moments, we need a corrective. We need to carve out time for an emotional state of which many of us are profoundly suspicious. Self-compassion. We're suspicious because that sounds horribly close to self-pity. But because depression and self-hatred are serious enemies of a good life, we need to appreciate the role of self-care in a good, ambitious and fruitful life. The thing is, self-care and uh, self-love, all that seems too mushy, too feely, too touchy. But in reality, that's nothing but putting yourself as your number one priority. Making sure that all your needs are met and you're feeling good and ready to take on the challenges of the external world. First, you deal with the internal world. And when you're done with that, when you feel good about yourself, you can tackle the challenges of external life. To this end, we can perform what we've called a self-compassion exercise, a structured meditation lasting 15 minutes or so. Lying in bed or perhaps a bath, turn over a sequence of thoughts that interrupt and correct the flow of your worst self-accusations. For a time, adopt an entirely kindly perspective on your setbacks. A crucial moment for development and growth is taking it chill. Take some time to relax, to recover, whether it's from gym, from overtraining, or from excessive amount of information, something that you are on a verge to learn about or doing some kind of a work on. Like when you prepare for exams, you have to consume a lot of information and that takes toll on you. You know the feeling when you wake up in the middle of the night thinking about mathematical equations. That's the feeling I'm talking about. Rest is when you grow. Attack mode is when you stretch your fibers. You tear them down. And rest mode is when you grow. Concerns both concepts of your physical body and your mental state. The self-compassion exercise goes like this. We're so in love with success, we fail to notice the scale of the challenges we routinely set ourselves. There is nothing remotely normal about what we've tried to achieve. We failed, but given the mountain we were trying to climb, the conclusion doesn't have to be that we're simply fools. Success is a very vague concept. It means different stuff for different people. But at the end of the day, I think we all can agree that successful life is about self-fulfillment. And we have to understand that to go there takes a lot of time. We need to gather a lot of patience within us so that we can tackle the challenges that will be thrown at us as we go along this road towards success. I can give you an example of 
people I see in the gym. They visit once or twice a month. They put out their whole energy at one station, thinking that this moment counts. One session is just only a small battle. To win the war, you have to be consistent with small victories. And those victories cannot be accomplished by shooting a fly with a bazooka. You have to progress steadily with reasonable increments that won't take everything out of you. We have tricky family histories, we all do. There were things which happened to us at the hands of others which can help to explain some of our current troubles. We're not entirely sane or well, but none of us are. We weren't well set up to carry out certain tasks. It isn't wholly our fault in the here and now. It's easy to blame the history and blame other people for your failures on you not succeeding with whichever task that you have in mind. But the truth is, we all are dealt different hands in this life and we have to be able to play with whatever we have. That's why the notion of total equality doesn't exist. It's a fantasy. We have to make the best out of what we have and that will only happen when you accept your shortcomings and strengths. From the media, you'd think everyone was rich and famous and successful. But in reality, undramatic, quiet failure is by a huge margin the statistical norm. We shouldn't tear ourselves apart for not managing to beat what were, in truth, awesome odds. Everything for the gram. In this era of social media, you have to remember one crucial thing. What people present you is really a projection of what they would like their lives to look like. If a person totally enjoys their everyday life, their relationships, their job, the different adventures that they engage in, they wouldn't have the time to present to the external world what they are experiencing. Because when you do that, you ruin the experience. It becomes job. And when you're focused on presenting, you detract yourself from experience and enjoying it wholeheartedly. Tough, self-critical people don't allow themselves the indulgence of believing in luck. They take responsibility for everything. They think winners make their own luck. But they don't, for the most part. Luck is a genuine feature of existence. We're robbing ourselves of fair consolation by believing that we're entirely in control and therefore entirely to blame when we crash. Luck is a very magical concept that entices people who are not in control of their lives. Luck isn't something that you have or don't have. Luck is something that may happen and you could agree that the chances of that thing happening, of that event happening are very minuscule. What you should focus on instead is showing up each and every day, making sure that you're prepared when unexpected things are happening to you, that you know how to react. Train so hard that you become lucky. You are not only your achievements. Status and material success are one bit of you, but there are others as well. Those who loved you in childhood knew this and in their best moments helped you to feel it. Rehearse the internalized voices of all those who've been kind to you. Bathe in the memory of a love independent of achievement. I would like to present some deeper understanding of what self-worth is dependent on your gender. It functions differently for women and men. On the core understanding, self-worth is something that is fostered within yourself. That's right. I am totally agreeing with that notion. That is programmed in you when you're a child, from your guardians, from your parents, from other people who are surrounding you, playing some kind of a role model part in your life. Fast forward some time, when you're a fully developed character, when you're a fully developed unit, and a mature adult person. There becomes a differentiation between men and women when it comes to self-worth. It's very easy for women and they are more predisposed to derive their self-worth from their looks, from the external world. Because evolutionarily speaking, we human beings have a huge driving factor in our sexuality. At the end of the day, everything is about procreation for us. And for women, that 
comes from their looks. The amount of options, the quality of options that they have directly correlates to the external cues, youth, looks, fertility, and also nurturing abilities. Whereas for a man, it comes from external endeavors, external accomplishments and wins and achievements. A man without any merits won't be valued in the society. Thus, his self-worth is interconnected with what he is achieving, with what he is creating and bringing on into this world. I am not saying that this is black and white. I am saying that this is how we are wired. Of course, there is an option for us to control it, because we are conscious creatures for the most part, if you are lucky, and we can directly influence our destiny. That's why we are so incredible creatures compared to other animals. We are not acting totally out of impulses and instincts. So yeah, taking care of your inner world is number one priority. It will help you to understand yourself and the external world, making the life easier for you. It seems it will never end. That's not the truth. It's just how a crisis feels. You need to reduce expectations to zero for a time. Take each new hour as it comes. And without being banal, what you need most of all is some rest. It's easy for us people to become very attached to the moment when the things are happening to us. We forget totally that some bad things or incidents that happen to us like several months ago or years ago, we look at them with a very detached lens. We can talk about them without feeling emotional. Because time heals all wounds. This too shall pass means that you shouldn't react emotionally for the things that will feel very minuscule in some small amount of time. And you should always have the attitude on sleeping on things before reacting. Bad times pass, good times pass. What remains is wisdom. If you want to watch more videos on self-love, you know what to do. Do you have a routine of self-compassion? Tell me in the comments. But for now, Osain, out.